Is artificial intelligence ready for us? I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Dr. Alexander Madri, Associate Professor of Computer Science at MIT. Welcome, Dr. Madri. Hello, how are you? Good. Give us a brief summary of your resume and your experience as it relates to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Yeah, so this is actually an interesting question. So actually, originally, as a faculty, I work, I work mostly on optimization and theory. But essentially, starting like two years ago, I got really interested in kind of more of the robustness aspects of AI. So I started thinking about like, you know, how to make machine learning more, you know, more safe and more reliable. And somehow this uh, you know, this kind of drove me into into this whole into this whole field. And since then, I worked on like you know making ML more robust, making ML more interpret interpretable, and also understanding why it actually works. Recently, you've been pondering the question of is artificial intelligence ready for us? What prompted you to begin considering this? So this was exactly kind of the conclusion of my kind of tour of discovery of like what is the state of the art of not only what we know about this as a science but also what we know about how this science how these concepts actually would interact with things that you know in the real world that things that we actually know about as humans so in particular like there are so like once you look at this interface you look at exactly like how these laboratory concepts how they look, work out in the real world, you realize there's a lot of things that just mismatch, right? So there, there's just like this brittleness, like so, you know, even if you just want to use, uh, you know, vision systems, uh, like deep learning based vision systems for our self-driving cars. And kind of these systems work pretty well most of the time, you know, they are very impressive. However, what is concerning is that actually, you know, if you take a particular input and even start rotating it a bit, for some angles of rotation, this, you know, this classifier will, will think that this is something completely different than what it is. And this kind of pervasive brittleness is already one thing that you can't really fully trust what your you know, vision system is telling you, if there is a pedestrian in the, you know, on the road or not, because there is a slight chance that like, there is a wrong angle or kind of some uh, wrong noise pattern that actually makes it a problem. So that's, that was one, one thing when you start to wonder, okay, would I actually feel safe and you know, ready to deploy these things responsibly in the real world? But there is more. You know, the other thing is that you know, usually we try to view machine learning solutions as this kind of you know, magical, magical tools. And in particular, people wanted to apply these things to, to, to hiring. You know, like if you want to decide if someone is a good candidate, you just train a classifier on a corpus of resumes with kind of this, you know, the outcome if this was a good candidate or not. And then, well, you will see that this, you know, this classifier seems to be able to generalize to your test set. Now you go and deploy it in the real world. And then you discover that, oh, well, this classifier has some like nice ways of deciding if someone is suitable for the job. For instance, decides if you played uh, lacrosse in high school and your name is Jared, then this means that you are absolutely qualified for this job. So, kind of, so there are these things that we discover that only that you know the way our our models are right, they actually sometimes are not the reasons we want them to be right. And there are all these questions about biases and ethics and fairness of ML that only now we start to discover even what the question asks, what the question is, let alone find the solutions. And then also there's a question of the actual something that we don't think enough about is saying. You know, that in some ways the current ML is really created for experts, okay? So essentially, like, we create ML technologies that really only experts can understand, you know? If you use it in medicine, it's not clear that your doctor will be actually able to understand all the complexity and this kind of nuances of the decisions that this machine learning classifier is giving you. And kind of, we need to think about, like, how to, not only how to get the reliable and robust and fair machine learning, but also machine learning that actually people without specific specialized training can also understand. So all of this kind of are the problems that we don't even, well, we only begin to even understand. So, you know, that's where my worry comes from. We want to ask the right questions, but we want to ask questions about implementing artificial intelligence, but how do we, how do we figure out what the right questions are to ask to begin with? Yes. So that's exactly, that's what worries me the most. And, you know, I don't think there is a recipe for that. Like, I think what we really need is we actually need a dialogue of all the interested parties. So it shouldn't be like we scientists, you know, working on machine learning, we figure out the latest and greatest and they just, just give it to you and say, yeah, here, use that. That's perfect for you. It's somehow there needs to be a dialogue of, you know, social scientists, of policymakers, of, you know, of 
broader audience and kind of trying to, first of all, explain what's going on, what is even the problem, and then figure out what can go wrong. And then figure out only, only like once you know what can go wrong and what you are worried about and what should be the right outcome, you know, then you can try to put some guarantees and kind of and measures of how to get there. What is AI 2.0 and how do we get there? Yeah, so, 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 so this is kind of the way I try to kind of phrase this challenge that I think we are facing. So to me, AI 1.0 is the AI we have now and I call it like proof of concept AI. So, you know, for a number of years, we could not even get this AI to work even in the average case sense. Okay, it's just like things didn't work out. You didn't need any reliability issues because your classifier just didn't work. Now they work impressively well. So we know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So that's what AI 1.0 is. But now once we know there is a proof of concept that works, now we have to relook at the whole pipeline and figure out, okay, now what it, will, what it is that we would need to deploy AI in a safe, reliable, secure, and responsible manner and kind of develop this new toolkit, this AI 2.0 that you know, we can actually use. Dr. Alexander Madri. Associate Professor of Computer Science at MIT's Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Department. If somebody wants to connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? So I think there are two ways. Uh, so one of them is on Twitter. You know, it's Alex uh, uh, underscore Madri uh, at Twitter. The other way is just look at our group web websites. It's like Madri, uh, uh, Madri uh, dash uh, lab at ml, uh, dot ml. And uh, you know, there you can also have link to our blog posts about like our work. And I think that's the best way to figure out what we are doing. Thank you so much for your time. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to my website, tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.